All right. Happy New Year to everyone, right? Uh, best wishes for year 2022. Um, I hope you will have a lot of success in chess, among other things. Nice. Yeah, Happy New Year. Exactly. So, what did we look at last time? We looked at uh, activity in the endgame. Yeah, you remember this stuff, right? Black uh, got a pawn on f2, but white was very fast with getting command of the open file. And they later on played rook b7. They had a very nice game. I vaguely remember since added chess. Vaguely, but that was just two weeks ago. So you should remember it, but okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, some part of it you, you remember that white didn't care about giving away this pawn. They were more interested in installing a rook on, on b7, for example. Nice. So today's uh, subject, let's see if we can get this going. Um, did you ever teach a US CS class? Yeah, many times. That's a funny question, uh, Chess Samurai. Yeah, many times. Uh -huh. uh, today's uh, subject, uh, yeah, on Chessable, exactly. Um, great tool, Chessable Classroom. I did also with uh, Zoom and Chessbase, but I think this is a great place for online learning so uh, yeah that's a great place please remember uh, about the chat window uh, stay among relevant relevant topics uh, don't uh, drift away then i'll make it private uh, the chat so just let's keep it to chess issues only right uh, so uh, yeah i'm one of those who gave m most lessons that's right uh, that's a good good point uh, uh -huh. um, fantastic uh, chess school, the US chess school run by Greg Shahadi. It's a very nice initiative. I know that it has helped many US players uh, over the years. Anyway, very welcome to today's topic. We will speak about tactical surprises. I think it's a very entertaining topic. Uh, there are some kind of, you can say, non-standard tactical ideas, which sometimes appears uh, in our games. We have to use a lot of imagination to to see them through and uh, that's what i would like to have a look at uh, today so let's start with something rather simple i would say i'll pick up something rather simple here uh, this is a game which was played a few years ago just to see if you're awake okay here is our first example today in this game between with white pieces Moradli and playing black is Sunny Kids. Uh, I think two grandmasters or international masters from Azerbaijan and Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see that black is slightly better in this position. They have a very nice bishop on the long, long diagonal. White pieces are rather passive. Structurally speaking, white has a problem with the d4 square and so on. Even so, this game. You might think that uh, black would grind them down, uh, their opponent in this game, slowly, uh, but something completely different happened. At this moment, white played here. No, not uh, swindling, no. Tactical surprises, I'm simply referring to moves which we didn't expect that would pop up. That's what I refer to. So it's 100% objective. Aha. Uh -huh. So black played knight xe4 says chess samurai. Uh, interesting. It's not black to move here, but that's definitely a resource that we should keep in mind. Anyway, let's have a look at what happened here. White should have played knight c3. This was the best choice for white. Uh, Try to keep the position uh, more or less controlled. Um, you will see that it has some implications. The, this is actually a good square for the knight. In the game, white played f4 instead. At this point, I'll quiz you for the com coming moves here from black, all right. This will be our little warm up today. Black to play and get a clear advantage. One minute 30, good luck everyone. Remember today's topic, tactical surprises. Okay, interesting point by Eric and Chess Samurai. I get the idea. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I think there is something even better, okay? Remember, we're speaking about surprising moves here, very surprising moves, okay? 
Yeah, you can also take with the bishop. That's true. I guess in that case, I'll take and I'll play knight. Bishop c1, sorry. All right. So nobody is following the footsteps of uh, black in this game. Of the Georgian Grandmaster. Nobody. Maybe we are still recovering from Christmas and uh, New Year's uh, celebrations. That's why we don't find the, the right path here. Okay, so nobody's even close. That's surprising. I know all of you have a very good tactical eye, so this should not be impossible for you. Yeah, there is like a hidden th uh, theme here, hidden idea for black. All right. Tactical surprises. Which kind of surprise? Okay, so nobody, absolutely nobody got the right move. Okay, yes, do another quiz. Uh, I can do that, of course, but I'll tell you very quickly uh, which moves probably aren't the correct ones. So somebody was saying here, bishop takes c4. In the first place, I don't understand what happens if I take on d6 first. Can, can't I do that? I'm giving check, right? And I can then take on c4. I guess I'm winning now. That would be a way just to throw away a very promising game. Uh, knight takes c4 is much more uh, relative. Knight takes... Uh, relevant, sorry. Much more relevant. If you play knight takes c4, uh, yeah, I'll have to take. You'll take back. You're now threatening my knight. I will have to protect it or move it. Well, if I move it, I'm losing the bishop. I, I can't really afford that, right? So what would I play? Um, good question. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this works also. Bishop f3, is that possible? Maybe? Oh, perpetual, says somebody. I, I couldn't see that. Where is the perpetual? Bishop d3, you mean? Is that is that the perpetual? Uh, I don't follow completely. Could I play king b3, maybe? Or where should I put my king on c3, perhaps? Maybe that's the smartest square, right? Rook d3, rook takes f3. Oh, oh, I understand. You want to play rook d3 here and take on f3. Yeah, you would end up the exchange down, right? If I play bishop b7. Uh, but you have many pawns. I guess that's that's a strong argument. I have no idea, really. Probably this is fine for you. Uh -huh. If this is good for black, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, you have a strong pass pawn coming up also. Yeah. Uh, and your rook. Yeah, my rook is not that well placed, if that's what you mean. Uh, black wins f pawn too. Yeah, black wins the f pawn. Safe to say this looks very promising for, for black. So I don't know. Maybe this is also possible. But maybe I played badly here, right? After bishop takes e4. Is there some other move? I mean, this would be a surprising move. Speaking about surprising moves, we would say, hey, that's a bad move. You can play bishop f2. But then I could play rook f1 again, right? Or, or am I missing something? Uh... Bishop e3 and rook d2. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a good uh, good argument. Yeah, I don't think I, I survive here, right? I don't survive in this position. Okay. How can white survive here then? I, I know that this is not supposed to be the best choice, but I'm struggling to see it myself. Maybe I should take this pawn so that I can bring in the rook, don't you think? Maybe I should just forget about uh, that hanging knight. Yeah, you give some, you lose some, or how do you say? I can maybe take here, right? And I can play rook takes f6, and I have a pass pawn. So, what do you think? Titan chess says, f takes e4, bishop takes e2 is bad. Is it bad for, for white, you mean? I, I don't see it that clearly, but, but okay. I have some move like that also, right? I don't know. Could I play that first? Did, did, did that make sense or, or it didn't make sense? White has a lousy structure. Yeah, but okay, I'm trying to survive. Uh, what else can I do? I'm trying to survive here. I have a past pawn, so... I think maybe I'm, I'm okay here after all. Oh, pawn takes? All right, but then I guess I benefited something from, from this, right? So maybe I didn't benefit anything. Uh, bishop f3 now? Uh, is that possible? Does bishop takes e2, e takes f6 work? Now I'm getting... Uh, yeah, no, I, this doesn't work, right? I can take it. And, yeah, I, I see your idea, but that's you have to be dreaming to, to think that will work out. No, that won't work out, I think. Oh, you want to take with the, take back on F1? Yeah, maybe, 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 but okay. Um, Black didn't have any reason to enter this, right? They could just take back, like somebody was saying, and it was not clear how to survive, survive with white, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I guess I don't have a very good answer to what, uh, what would happen here. But Bishop F3, that's what I should play here, probably. 
And you were saying Rook D3, is that so? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe this is okay. But I mean, you can see the difference here now. If I play a move like Bishop E7 and you take, now I don't uh, lose the pawn anymore. I hope you can agree on that. I can play something like Rook F7. And I think this is much better than the previous line where we didn't swap pawns. I hope that's uh, understandable. So yeah, uh, interesting idea. Definitely something to take into account. Knight takes E4. We had some other moves. People were saying G takes F4, but I'm not sure that makes a big difference. So, okay. Uh, let's. Oh, bishop e3 was also proposed. Yeah, that's another reasonable move, of course. Uh, preparing some some surprise on uh, on d2. I don't know. Maybe I can take and I can play bishop c1. Or could I play bishop c1 straight away? I mean, my only mission here is to survive. Maybe I could play bishop c1 and I'm still in the game. I think. All right. So let's uh, go back again. Uh, let's request this uh, little. Uh, exercise let's see if we can figure it out now we have already rejected so many moves let's see if you can if you can get it now so 130 tactical surprises guys where is the tactical surprise the hidden surprise look for that okay we have a winner rz 2018 you got it strategic simmer chess samurai eric l008 okay nice work Finally, people woke up. New Year's celebrations are definitely over. Eric L008, Adi Chess, Subham, JM Chess, 2010. Nice. Yeah, the Grandmaster also, also noticed this. Uh -huh. So these are the typical, like, forbidden moves or invisible moves. Call it as you like. We have more winners here as uh, Subham, Royale, MM Thinker, Hacker Guru, Jake 2021, Pikachu, Troy Boy, Aditya, Alg 19. Maybe we can stop here, right? Because uh, most people already got it. So, uh, RZ 2018, you're the fastest one here. Okay, what's your move here for Black? Right, knight f5. What a brilliant move. Uh, complete surprise, I think, for white, this move. The knight is coming to e3. I mean, here you can clearly see the pattern, no? This move f4, it kind of asks for some tactical uh, idea for black now that e3 is weak. Yeah, and I cannot take, right? Uh, RZ 2018, you calculated everything here. Aha, my king has no good squares. The rook is coming to d2. Going to c3, it will just go to d3 first. If I go to c1, as you can see, aha, we can just uh, force the king to b2 and then we play rook d2. We get back the piece and we are completely winning, of course. In the game, fair to say, in the game, white didn't uh, proceed like this. They noticed, of course, the whole situation. And after knight f5, they played instead uh, the move bishop c1, I think. Uh, did they play bishop c1? Let's see. Yeah, they played bishop c1. But uh, that's uh, ugly for white, no? That's ugly. What do you think black played, uh, RZ 2018? How would you continue here? Aha, you got it, uh, Chess Samurai. Yeah, I know, of course, Chess Samurai. You wrote it in the chat. You wrote in the chat the move 95. I just ignored you so that I wouldn't ruin the exercise. Aha, 93, of course, bishop takes. We're threatening rook d2. Unfortunately, I mean, apart from white having a bad position and everything, they're also losing a pawn now because the pawn is hanging on, on f4. So that's exactly how the game went. Uh, black capitalized on their little trick and they went on to win this endgame without much difficulties. So, yeah, 93 to get the bishop pair, but also to, to win a pawn. I mean, that's just fantastic, both of those two things. So, interesting example. White had some difficulties here. Now you understand everybody why knight c3 was a good move. We avoid this tactical pattern on the second rank and, and so on. We can continue to fight here for a while. Black's knight, like somebody was saying, the knight is not well placed. Uh, it would be much better placed on e6, of course. And then the battle would continue. Uh, however, they played f4 and they fell into this move, knight f5. Titan says, says when your opponent is thinking for a really long time after you make a quick move, does that mean that they are planning a tactical surprise? Uh, I don't think so, uh, really. I think if your opponent is thinking for a very long time, it simply means that they have some troubles or, or maybe the position is very complex. 
Somebody said, don't think more than 20 minutes uh, about the move. After that, uh, just pick any move. I don't remember exactly who, who said this, but uh, I think it makes, uh, it makes some sense. Uh -huh. uh, because, yeah, after 20 minutes, usually we already we thought a lot and we, we, know, we know a lot about, about the position already. And if we continue to think, it's probably because we, we are still like messed up with, with the whole position. All right, let's have a look at another example. I'm not allowed to think more than nine minutes on a move, says L008. Really? Uh, I think you, you, we shouldn't be that uh, strict, right? Sometimes it's okay to think a little longer, but you, okay, if you think 10 minutes on each move, it's, it's bad, of course. You should try to find some kind of balance and, of course, have a look at your opponent's time also. Uh, obviously, it's not good to have a big disadvantage uh, related to, to your opponent's time. Uh -huh. I thought six minutes on move two. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what your opponent played, right? All right, we're ready for our next little challenge here. You can see that uh, we have some kind of uh, complex position. Uh, White lost the right to Castle, uh, but maybe White's pawn structure is better. I don't know. Anyway, today we're not speaking so much strategy. We're speaking more tactics. So it's black to play. And uh, we will have a look here if you can find uh, the very nice way in which black proceeded in this uh, game, okay? I'll give you for this mission one minute, one minute and 30 seconds. All right, black to play, try to find a nice way in which we can continue here with the black pieces. Take your time, take your time, please. Don't send me the move already. Think about it, okay? Okay, chess samurai, titan chess, and tactical magician, you got it. HDI chess also, very nice. Aha, uh -huh. hacker guru. We have some interference, but uh, no problem. Okay, HDHS, Hacker Guru, RZ 2018, Amazon, Kwaki, L008. We have many winners here. Uh, Eric, JM Chess, Guinea Pig, and Tori Chess. You're very close, but you're missing the little detail, the surprising move, you could say. There are two surprising moves this time, right? So let's have a look here at what uh, Chess Samurai has to say about this. All right, Samurai, you're on. How do you play with black here? Okay, so we go knight c5. All right, please go uh, ahead. Okay. Knight c5. Oh, I can Pretty, yeah, you can move the pieces. Okay, so Pretty the move, knight, right? Yeah, uh -huh. He knight b3, and he cannot really move the queen because the b2 hangs. And if he moves the rook, I think like rook, rook e1, for example. Well, I wouldn't play rook e1, I guess, because I'm I'm having an... I think I, I drop a pawn here, right? You have knight b3 uh, yeah. later on. Or I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe. Something like this. I, th I think I'm hanging a pawn on, knight, on B2. Knight D3, maybe, um, maybe knight E6 first, and, okay. and then I can choose which pawn I will take. I mean, I would probably play rook D1. Okay, please continue, Samurai. Knight B3. Aha, uh -huh, knight B3. Actually, yeah. And white is in trouble, right? White is in trouble here. Uh, I don't know where to put the queen. Yeah. Knight is there some... Knight A4, only, only move, right? Tactical surprise. <laughs> But I don't know if it's enough for, for white. Maybe they can actually stay alive here, right? With knight a4. Aha. Uh -huh. I think yeah. so, yeah. Be because you vac vacate the c3 square, right? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, he should, if he takes the knight. Sorry? If he, if he took the knight instead of going the sub d1. If he took the knight. Yeah, I mean, anyway, just for the record here, knight e6 is a good move here. You can also play like this and then just develop your pieces. You're not winning here, maybe, with black. It's just extremely uncomfortable for, for black. All your pieces are now in, in good, uh, good places now. So, yeah, okay, please continue. Uh, I'll take the knight, right? I'll take the knight. Yeah, bishop c5. Aha. So, you know what I think? When white uh, played this position, they had prepared here to play simply king g3 and escape with the king, right? But what did they miss? Bishop g1. Exactly. They missed this move. It's not in every game that you put a bishop on g1 with the black pieces, right? It's not... Very typical, uh, but it's a very strong move here because now there is no good way to to stop rook g8. I mean, white can always give back the bishop, but strategically they are completely ruined here. So that's how the game went, and uh, yeah, black went on to win. Oh, we had some comments in the in the chat. Okay, let's have a look here. This reminds me of a king hunt classic where white went bishop g7 after sacrificing their queen to cut off the black king on g7 from going 
back to h6. Yeah, sounds interesting, Titan Chess. Uh, which game might that be? You can tell us next time, maybe. You can bring up the game. Maybe we should do that once, right? You should uh, post your own games and we can, we can look at them, your favorite games and so on. Anyway, so yeah, it's the common theme of kicking out the king and cutting off the escape square, says RZ 2018, but hard to find in the game. Yeah. Uh, right, Amazon is saying something also. Queen takes d4 after knight a4, queen takes d4. Oh, you're back in the other variation. I understand. Uh, you're back in this variation, right? But I don't follow here. How do you mean? Take with queen? Uh, that, that doesn't work, does it? Or you want, oh, you want to play b5. Yeah, but this is not as clear as the other variation, for sure. Uh, white should have some way of, of staying alive here. Uh, giving up some, I don't know. Many moves come to mind here. I can't really judge uh, which one would be the best one. Uh, Bishop takes b5, says uh, L008. Can you really get uh, away with that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right. You, you, want, you want to take on d5. Okay. Uh, looks okay. Yeah. Maybe. Why not? Okay. So, summing up, we have almost the same topic as previously, no? Previously, the night, the last exercise, the night went to d6. Uh, it could be taken by the pawn. And here we have a similar situation. The knight goes to c5. It's a kind of invisible move. Uh, knight c5, like a forbidden move. Don't put your pieces where they can be taken and so on. But actually it works out very well. But only because we have this move. If, if this move was not around, if you play something like rook g8, uh, white is more than fine here. And I think that's what the Grandmaster saw in the game. He just forgot about this sneaky move. Bishop g1. All right. Time for our next challenge. Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to pick games which I think you haven't seen before. I hope I'm doing well so far. So you won't see Carson and Caruana uh, in this little selection. Here we have a game between, well, not easy for me to pronounce, but uh, with white, uh, Grandmaster from Vietnam and win, and playing black is Li Shi Long. You can see we have some kind of... Uh, yeah, what would this be? Some Nim Swindian, I was going to say, but yeah, maybe some Nim Swindian position. Oh, white has a nice center here. Black could have considered to play bishop uh, b7. It's, it's a very reasonable move, but okay, white can play e5. I had a little look at this position. What do you think uh, black should play here, guys? You can just uh, write it in the in the chat. Uh, knight e5 says Amazon. Knight takes e4. That's not a possible move. Bishop e5 says chess samurai. Bishop d5 says Titan chess. All right. If you say Bishop d5, I have a, I have an argument against you. I think I'll take on d5, and you can probably guess my next move here. Yeah, not difficult, no. Of course, Titan chess, knight g5. So I don't, I don't think you want this really, do you? Because you have issues with the king. And f5, you cannot play f5, I think. That would be a surprising move. You're hanging the pawn on e6, right? And g6 is also... Uh, Ugly for black. There is some, something with knight takes e6 coming up. So, okay, I understand. Bishop d5 is a, is a pretty move, but I'm not sure it's, it's a good idea. Um, knight e5, somebody was saying, I think it's the same situation, knight g5. Aha, Subham, you got it. I think that's the right move. I think bishop e4 is the best move here. Exactly. So, you play bishop e4 to drive away the white queen from this diagonal. They'll play something like bishop uh, uh, queen e2. Uh, maybe now you can play your favorite move here. Bishop d5. I, although I wouldn't play it because I would say they'll play bishop d3. Uh, and it's annoying, no? I don't have a good square for my for, for my knight. Unless I take, of course. I take and I put the knight there. But if you ask me, I would rather play here simply bishop takes f3. I mean, if they take with the queen, I'll take on c4. If they take on f3, I'll play knight e5. And I think black is okay here. I think black should be more or less uh, equal. Uh, well, anyway, we have some comments here. Uh, when where bishop e7 happens, why not knight takes e4? All right. Bishop e4, bishop e7 is favorable, giving attacking chances to white. Yeah, but okay, everything is relative. No, white will have some attacking chances here, but maybe we can use this f5 move that you were speaking about. Maybe we can prepare it, rook e8 and f5, I don't know. Maybe in that way we can defend here. And I mean, after all, white's pawn structure is not that great anymore. So we will go back to the start now. Yeah, we'll go back to the start. So here is your mission. Uh, Black played in the game. In, they didn't like the looks of knight bishop e7 uh, e5. So they played instead the move knight takes e4. All right. 
time to think how should white react uh, to this situation. Okay, I'll give you one minute, 30 seconds. Good luck, everyone. How to continue with white pieces here? Remember today's topic, uh, tactical surprises. Uh, we don't know exactly at what moment, though. So uh, it's not necessarily now. It might be a little later. But okay, why to play and uh, do something surprising? Well, surprising and uh, hopefully good also. Okay, take your time. Okay, interesting move, uh, Amazon. Maybe I can play knight f6 there. I just uh, ignore your sacrifice. Adi chess. I think I'll just ignore that sacrifice, right? I'll play knight f6. Uh, try to pick, bring out my pieces. Okay, hdi chess, you're close. What if you play like that? I guess I play knight f6, uh, hdi chess. Okay, titan chess. We have a winner. We have a winner here. Titan chess got it. The only one so far. The one and only Titan chess. Heavy the hero, hacker guru, uh, that's the main line. Okay, you can imagine yourself what I will play there, right? The, I understand Pikachu, your move, but I will ignore that. I'll play knight c5, I guess, in that position. Uh, chess samurai, that's a little slow. I could maybe play queen d5 against your move, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we have more winners here. Also, L008 found this one. Most people go down the main line, but uh, you should have looked a little more further into this. Um, yeah, <laughs> another tactical surprise. You're right, Titan Chess. So let's listen to Titan Chess, one of the two students who found the right way to go with White here. Okay, of course, whenever they sack something, our first uh, impression should be, our first uh, thought should be to accept it. Just for the record, no, somebody was saying bishop takes e6, I would just play knight f6 here. I'm too lazy to calculate. This looks nice. I bring out my pieces. I'm ready to swap uh, bishop on c8 and so on. d5, somebody else said, okay, again, I'm lazy to calculate. I'll play knight c5, you'll put your queen somewhere, I'll take, I'll play bishop e7, and I think black is just fine here. Maybe there is something better, but that's for for starters, okay? Uh, now back to Titan Chess. Okay, Titan Chess said Queen takes e4. I play Queen takes e4. What now? Tactical surprise. Here we go. Bishop h6. That was not expected, but this makes a huge difference. Why is this move so important? Well, to understand it, we must, of course, first look at the main variation here. If Queen takes, what do you think would happen, uh, Titan Chess? I can give you the black pawn also. Exactly. Black can simply uh, simplify here. Uh, yeah, let's put the king somewhere. You can see for yourself, this is not uh, a good endgame for white. Black is more active and also uh, white has an isolated pawn. Well, we're a pawn up, I think. Really. Yeah, black is actually a pawn up. That's even better. So a lot of advantages. But once you see this pattern, uh, once you see the pattern, sorry, it's taking some time to... What happened? I think uh, chessable is a great uh, tool, but I think something happened at this moment. So. I'll just uh, reload the whole the whole exercise. It forgot about the contents of the of the board. Okay, let's let's do this again. Okay, you're on uh, Titan Chess. You can continue. Uh, sorry for the repetition. Okay, so we accept, and now the surprising move. So in this way, what are we doing? We are doing th uh, three things exactly. We're co connecting the rooks. Uh, we are keeping this threat, and we have a new threat coming up because if Black tries to avoid our threat against the rook, we have our new threat coming up. Exactly. So that's an interesting move. I have a little selection, you know, of bishop h6 moves. This is only the, not the only time I have seen this pattern. There is a very nice game in the in the Petrov defense. I don't remember exactly who played, but there is a nice game with bishop h6. Very surprising move uh, and very strong. So yeah, my impression, black didn't see this coming when they played knight x4. They simply uh, forgot about this intermediate move bishop h6 they thought that white would perhaps take and then they would have this nice uh, trick queen takes f1 i don't know if also the other way is possible if, if we could play like this i'm not sure but okay the other one is so nice so we don't have to spend time on it what white uh, i mean black didn't see was this very very nice intermediate move unfortunately there is nothing black can can do here um yeah i mean what what else can we play we have to defend the rook somehow you can play bishop a6 also, uh, but uh, white will just cash in the exchange here by queen g4, I guess. 
If bishop a6, knight d2, yeah, but you don't have any need to play knight d2, right? It's better just to, to cash in the, the exchange before the, the black rook uh, goes away. So, yeah, nasty, nasty surprise, nasty surprise. All right, let's uh, move on to our next little surprise. Don't you think we should have a look at an endgame also? I think it's time to, to bring in an endgame here. Uh, by Dutch Grandmaster Luke van Veli. Very, very nice endgame. Knight versus Bishop. That's always an interesting battle. You're playing with the white pieces here. I would like to know the best way to continue here playing with the white pieces. All right. Uh, four moves I will ask you for here. 130. All right. Good luck, everyone. Try to find a way in which Fanveli was able to capitalize on his extra pawn here in a rather surprising way, I would say. Please notice that I'm trying to approach my king to the g6 pawn. Okay, Carlos, I understand your idea, but I'll approach the king. I'll break, break king e6 there. Okay, so take your time, guys. Think carefully. Uh, little Grandmaster, I will approach the king. For your information, okay, Chess Samurai, you got it. We have a winner here. Uh, Hacker Guru, JM Chess, Adi Chess, I'll play King E5 against your move, I think. King E5. I hope I have chances to save this still. Okay, so we only have one winner so far. Um, we only have one winner. Okay, strategic Simmer, you were very close. I should give you half a point for your solution. That's fine. Great work. Uh huh. Amazin, you got it also. Very nice. Excellent work. So we have two winners so far. This time we have the three winners with the mean Sphinx. This time we have the surprising move on move one. Aha, uh -huh. this time the surprise came from the very beginning. So let's uh, see what Amazin has to say. All right, Amazin, you're on. Um, knight h1. Wow, that's a surprising move. Why do you go that way with the knight, uh, Amazin? To go knight g3 and to go knight f5 or knight h5. Exactly. Very nice thinking. OK, let's have a look at the main line here. I'll approach the king. My plan is to take then the pawn. G3. And already now we can see that my plan is uh, getting uh, more and more complex. I cannot play king f6, of course. Knight h5 and f6 is the Exactly. We just win this pawn endgame uh, thanks to our outside pass pawn. Exactly. Uh, so if I play something else, let's say bishop h6, what would you play? Exactly. Knight h5. Now concrete threat of g7. I must go down with the king. And at this point, there are different ways to continue here. I like this move, king e2. Uh, what on earth is Tactical Magician? You want to say something, Tactical Magician? Uh, be my guest. Some issue? No. Okay, is G7 still winning? I wouldn't use this move, you know, G7. I wouldn't use it because I don't want to show my cards uh, still. Uh, if G7, King F7, my knight is tied to the pawn. So maybe black can just sit and wait. I don't know. They could at least try. So I think it's better to keep the pawn on G6 so that the knight has more flexibility. Is g4 winning? Um, yeah, I think g4 is okay. I think g4 is okay. Uh, I'll play something like bishop c1. I'll just wait for you. Um, that's the way I would play here. But um, I thought there was another, another way to, to continue. I'm, I would be happy to hear about which plans you can see for white here. King e2 is simple. Okay, Amazon, you play king e2. I'll just play bishop c1. Which do you think is the best way to, to continue here? Aha, RRJ Chess Master. I, I agree with your plan. King D1 and just move, uh, sorry, King D1 and just go around the pawn, try to provoke E3. That's one way to win. And I think the other one is this one. You can also play G3 so that if they go back, you could play something like Knight F4. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is also uh, a good plan for, for white, or maybe not. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe it's, it's unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Let's stick to let's stick to your plan instead. King d1. We move around the king, and uh, yeah, I don't think there is much black can do about this. They they will have to sit and wait, and we can play king d4. And uh, now the pawn is on e3, which helps us, no? Because 
uh, we can attack it more easily. Yeah, I think this should be winning for for White. Uh, I'm not one one hundred percent sure how it uh, how it's arranged, but uh, yeah, there should be good good winning chances. Uh, maybe Black is running out of moves also. I don't know if we can use this same idea of uh, like I was saying, you no, know, with G3 to create like a, a little square for the knight, something like that, and then we can pick up the pawn. Yeah, this should be winning, right? Or is there anyone who can see some other? Uh, I can't see any problem with this. Yeah, I mean, just for starters, they cannot go and take the pawn because, uh, yeah, we'll take and uh, they will always lose the pawn and game and so on. So, yeah, knight x1, very nice move. And Grandmaster Favelli, he duly found it. He duly found it. He knew that this was the best square for his knight. Okay, some people are saying g3 on move one. Uh, why Why would you play that? If I approach the king, what was the idea, L008? You want to play knight h3, is that so? Okay, I understand. Yeah, who knows? What would I play? King f6, maybe? Um, I understand. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to play knight f4, and if knight h6, you will play knight d5. Is that so? Because if you play king e2, I can take, right? This time, I think I'm. it's okay. This time, I won't lose the pawn in game. So you will play knight d5, I guess. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Knight. What is a draw? Yeah, but this is probably not a draw. But doesn't black keep some chances for, for a draw here? Maybe not. If I bring in the king very quickly, could I do that? King f5 and... I don't know. Do you think this is simple? Uh, if you say so, I'll believe you. Uh, but I don't see it as simple. Oh, knight e5 maybe to play b6, you mean. All right. Maybe you're right then. Yeah, maybe this actually gives uh, good winning chances. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe I should put the bishop on d6, but... Yeah. Yeah, unnecessary, exactly. Maybe you will win it this way also. But uh, I think what Van Veli played was much nicer. It's much cleaner this, this way to play. Aha. Uh -huh. So, knight h1. Maybe you remember that famous Nimsovich game where he had a knight on... How was it? He has a knight on g3. He played knight h1. Then he played knight f2. Check your classics. This is... Classical case of improving our pieces. This is something similar. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Let's uh, move on. Let's move on and see our next example. Should we bring in some more pieces? Yeah, let's bring in some more pieces. Let's have a look at a Sicilian battle um, from a game played a few years ago. In this game, we have with the white pieces, Bokema and playing black is the Bashis. Uh, I think international masters, no? So you're playing with the black pieces here. I would like to know how you proceed with black here, which would be the best way to, to continue here playing black. All right. Um, I guess that's, that's everything we have to ask for, right? Yeah. One minute 30. Good luck, everyone. Try to find a way, an unexpected way in which Black was able to get a big advantage in this game. Oh, you're very close, uh, Titan Chess. You got the right idea. Chess Samurai also. Yeah, that's the right idea. I'm just afraid it's not uh, correctly executed. Uh, Subham, uh, I understand your idea, but I'll take the pawn. I'll take the pawn and I'll try to put the knight in the center, so to speak. But uh, definitely I would give you half a point because you have grasped the right idea. Um, all right, uh, Adi Chess, Tactical Magician. There are many exchange sacrifices in the Sicilian, but I don't think this is the best uh, occasion for it. So, Savham, or or G Chess Master, and Mean Banks. You got the right idea, HTI Chess also, but you should adjust this plan. You should adjust this plan. Um, okay. Smiling floor, nice plan with the rook. I see what you mean. Uh, okay, Amazon, you got it again. Great work. Uh -huh. So, that's a little extra touch uh, which Amazon is explaining to us. Okay, please go ahead, Amazon. What uh, should you play here? Yeah, you know, this is an interesting topic as such, this kind of situation. Very often, we like to keep the pawn here to restrict our opponent. We love to keep a pawn on h4, we don't want to commit it and so on. But tactically, just like Chess Samurai is saying, it's very useful for us 
that the second rank is, is open. Uh, so it's a good moment to play this, but only if you understand the next move here, which is our surprise move. So please go ahead, Amazon. Exactly, Bishop A3. Very pretty move. I guess White was not focusing too much on the queen side here. They were looking more at the king side. But this is a very nice move because no matter what happens here, White will lose control of, of their structure. Um, knight E5 is not uh, working here really because as Chess Samurai was saying, now we can just pick up the pawn. Oh, you want to play Rook C? Yeah, but I think it's easier to take the pawn, right? You, you don't have anything to fear here really. Uh, White has, ma has many things to fear because their king is getting exposed at this point. Don't forget that the queen is staring at that pawn and if king g1 we have bishop c5 and so on. So yeah, in the game they played after bishop a3, they played I think rook e2. Yeah, you can, I mean if you take, yeah, they will just take and it's a horrible structure for, for white and this is a passed pawn and so on. So yeah, this is nightmare for white. In the game they played rook e2 and uh, what did you play Amazon? We just win a pawn here, right? Okay, you can probably play like, like that also. I don't know. Does this give me an extra tempo attacking the pawn or that doesn't matter? Yeah, uh, I think you, you missed, mixed up the move order, no? You should just take that pawn. Uh, not so much for the pawn maybe, but in order to uh, leave white with less stability in the center. So now knight e5, now finally your your favorite move here, rook c4. Yeah, now it's a good move, of course, the rook. I mean, after all, the, the rook was attacked. We create a counter threat. They can try queen f3, hitting the pawn on f7. But uh, I guess we can just defend it, right? Which would be the best defense here? What do you think? Bishop anchors on d4. Yeah, interesting way to put it. Okay, so how would you defend this pawn, guys? Which would be the best defense? I know which is the worst defense. Yeah, queen d7. Did you check knight xp6? No issues there. Yeah, queen b7 is... <laughs> don't, don't play that, please. That would ruin all our previous uh, efforts. Uh -huh. So I guess we should pr protect it exactly, queen e6. I like that move also. If they take on b6, we can just ignore it exactly. We can play rook c3. No matter what happens here, you can see that black has a nice game. Um, their bishop is stronger than the knight, probably. This is not exactly a stronghold for the knight. And also black's king, I feel, I think uh, feels much safer than and whites here. Okay, they're not winning here. Yeah, one thing to notice here also is that this pawn will slowly try to get closer here. So, uh, nice little tactical idea. Uh, please notice that if you play bishop a3 straight away, I can perhaps just take this pawn. And I mean, you can take here, but uh, I have some more tactical chances here. My king is much safer. I mean, that's the main difference here because I have still the f2 pawn uh, on the board. So, yeah. That's the right uh, way to go. We should take first. This is always complex, which is the right moment to take such a pawn. But here, because black has prepared this nice uh, tactical shot or strategical shot, call it what you like. Uh -huh. All right, let's uh, continue. Let's see a game by Peter Svidler, which he was very close to winning. But in the end, his opponent was able to save themselves here. So. Maybe you have seen this example. I like it uh, very much. White is the exchange up. However, Peter Swidler with the black pieces has started a very strong attack. You can see there is the threat of rook f1. So I would like to know how you would continue here with uh, white pieces. Is there a way out of this difficult situation? I think many of you will find this very quickly. Uh -huh. So I'll give you just uh, one minute uh, 20 for this, okay? Oh, you saw this before, JM Chess. Interesting. But you forgot it. Oh, sometimes they say if we don't remember a tactic, it was not so important to us. I don't know. Is that a conclusion? <laughs> anyway, good luck, everyone. Okay, L008. You got it. Very nice. Oh, many people found it. Yeah, I knew this was an easy one. L008, Strategic Seamer, RRG Chess. RZ 2018, Chess Samurai, Wu Chess, Tactical Magician. Yeah, this was a piece of cake for you. Aha, uh -huh. very nice tactical vision. There was a defense here for white. There is only one defense. You have found it. Also, the Israeli uh, Grandmaster found it. So let's listen to L008, the fastest one on this one. He found it in like five seconds, I think. 
Rook g1, that's not a natural move, but it's very, very strong. In the first place, we are preventing the mate. In the second place, we are threatening to give mate ourselves, now that we have three pieces lining up against the bishop on g8. And if black takes, white has something prepared here. Aha, a typical uh, perpetual check uh, combination. As you can see here, white ends up down material. However, they have assured themselves of a little perpetual check here with the queen. Aha, uh -huh. that's exactly how the game went. Um, maybe Siedler had chances earlier in this game to, to win it, but at this point, uh, white saw this move, rook g1. Maybe not so difficult because you don't have so much else to do here. Some people were saying bishop f6 check, but this doesn't, doesn't work, I think. I'll just take it with the bishop and I'm protecting the, the, the bishop now with the rook, so this doesn't work. And from your other moves here, rook takes d4 that cannot be a good move uh how is that rook takes d4 this ends with mate if i'm not mistaken uh, rook f1 and uh you give mate right so that's not possible aha uh, sorry did i miss something in the chat uh yeah bishop f4 sadly can't work yeah what happens with bishop f4 i guess i can just take it right and again if you take on d4 uh no way i will take take back i'll just go for my mate anyway aha Nice. Let's have a look at a more complex example. Uh, let's see one of the best players from my country, uh, historically speaking. We had a European champion under 20, uh, Ferdinand Hellos. He's playing here with the black pieces. As you can see, this is a Grunfeld game, right? We're in the Grunfeld and uh, it looks like if white was slightly better here, but actually they're in huge trouble. So it's your move here, try to find a way in which Black was able to win this game. They're actually basically winning in this position. But you have to be very precise to find a way in which the Swedish Grandmaster uh, continued here. Long variation, but uh, I'm pretty sure that you can uh, find, it, find it out how to, how to win this game. All right, let's see if I can bring this up. Oh, sorry if it's a very long variation, no? but... Uh, yeah, it should be uh, easy to understand. Okay, two minutes. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, white is uh, down a pawn, but they have a lot of uh, pressure, no? Long variation, take your time. Remember, there is a surprising move. There is a very surprising move here. Okay, you are very close, uh, Quacky, but you should have taken more time. Um, maybe I can... I can just ignore it, no? The pawn. I won't take it. What will I play instead? Good question, Koki. I'm thinking about your move. Uh, what does that mean? Interesting, yeah. Maybe you found another good uh, way to play here, Koki. Uh, rook d1, maybe. Rook d1 to protect the pawn, perhaps. Okay, uh, Medina Tiger, you're hanging in the knight on c6. Can't I just take it? So, Quacky, Wu Chess, Adi Chess, and JM Chess. I like your idea. I, I'm just wondering if I could play Rook D1 just to strengthen the. Oh, but you'll play Queen B6 then, right? I see. Interesting idea, yeah. We will have to look at this very carefully. Maybe you found a better way. Okay, Chess Samurai, I understand your, your move. Uh, that's probably a good choice as well. Uh, what would I play against that? Yeah. Maybe there are several ways to continue here with, with black. Could I play bishop b5 samurai? And Oh, you take on d4 and you can take on e2. Okay, I see what you mean. Oh, complex, complex stuff. Um, yeah, I can't find a good move there, uh, I'm afraid. So who, 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 get, who got the closest here? Uh, Jake and uh, Hacker Guru, you got very close. Aha, uh -huh, that's the right idea for sure. Yeah, long variation, wrong variation. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Okay, Amazon, you got very far. Yeah, uh, you got very, very far. Impressive. All right, so time's up. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can understand this together. Please uh, remind me of, uh, of the moves uh, that you were proposing here. So, yeah, white is a pawn down, but they have some space advantage and uh, 
the bishop is well placed and so on. They would like to play something like rook d1, strengthening their center. So this pawn on d4 is always like a object, attacking object in the in the Grunfeld, right? So some people were saying here the move bishop c8 at once. Yeah, I guess you can play that. Perhaps white could play bishop b5, right? To keep some pressure there. Um, not so convincing, maybe, bishop, bishop c8. Uh -huh. we, we should look for something even better. So a lot of people were saying knight c6, and after queen c4, knight takes d4. You will have to help me to understand this. If I take on d4, what was the idea? What were you planning to play now? Bishop c8. Okay, I understand. You're attacking here, you're attacking there. Don't I have knight c6? Or am I hanging something? Let me know if I'm hanging something, please. Um, I don't think this is... Uh, working, no? For black. What else? Uh, some people were saying b5 at move 1. Very, very interesting idea. This is very close to what happened in the game. So b5, we're preparing to go queen b6. Uh, if bishop takes b5, I guess there are at least two problems. We could play either queen b6 or rook b8. Both look very, very strong. So I don't think I can take the pawn. So what would I play then after queen, after, after b5? Anyone with a sharp tactical eye let me know what to play with white. Could I play rook a1, maybe? Queen c5 says mean sphinx. But yeah, okay, Amazon, congratulations. Yeah, you got closest. Okay, but now let's focus on, on this game. So maybe rook a1. Oh, but knight c6 is very strong, right? Attacking the pawn. What if I play queen c5 now? Queen b6. Yeah, and, and this is very close to the game. White will collapse here very soon, I think. But I don't know. I get the feeling that white is better off here than in the game. If I play bishop e3 here. Uh, don't you think I have a chance of saving this with white? I don't think it's so bad for for for, for white, actually. Uh, this, this bishop is very nice. It's tying up black a little, no? B4, somebody is saying. B4. Okay, I can probably go back with the rook, right? Wait, there should be three. Oh, wait, rook. Sorry? Uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, I think this is a very interesting idea. So if you said B5, I'm happy to award you uh half a point i don't know what happened my what's happened uh okay now it's back so in the game okay uh, we listened already to um who got it right um who was it i don't remember anymore amazon we, we listened to amazon let's listen to somebody else here uh okay mean Sphinx, you can uh try this out okay how do you continue? Here? I didn't get this right, but... But you, you, you got the first moves, the first two moves. The second move is very, very important. So this is how the game went. Knight c6, white played queen c4, and here is the key move here. Uh, b5. Yeah. Exactly. You play this to try and get a, 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 a piece on the b5 square. That way then knight d4 or bishop d4 is possible. Whoever... Right, right, right. Yeah. And also you're vacating the b6 square. You're freeing the, the b6 square for your queen, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that when, when this position, when T-Man with white pieces, he was analyzing this, I think he just, he didn't think about this move. He, he, maybe he didn't visualize this move. That's what happened here. So white is in big trouble here. If I take on b5 with a bishop, I think this is uh, very bad for them. What would you play now, Minsvanks? Which would be your best move here? Taking into account that, that the queen is tied to the defense of the bishop. You can maybe take on d4. Yeah, interesting. Uh, what would happen then? This is what somebody was saying, right? Maybe I can just take back, though. Um, you will only win a pawn here, if I'm not mistaken. You only win a pawn in this variation. But, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Sorry? Oh, yeah. So try to go for more. You can go for more here, right? You can go for more. Um, remember, the queen is tied to the bishop, right? Yeah. So what else? What else comes to mind? Mm. Queen b6 and rook to c8, knight a5. Yeah, knight a5, exactly. So in this way, now white is in huge trouble. The queen cannot go there due to rook b8. And here also there is a hanging piece on c3. So that's what black can uh, profit uh, from here. They can take, uh, exactly, and they can take on d4. And in the end, everything works wonders for black here. White won't be able to defend everything. In the end, they will lose uh, material here, 94, and I can't see a way for white to, to survive here. So, yeah. 
that's uh, that's not what happened in the game, but that's one of the ideas behind this movie five. So in the game, Team Man, which by the way was one of the best players in chess history, I think he was number three at his uh, best uh, again uh, after Karpov and Kasparov. He played here the move Queen C5, and that's where, where you got it wrong, right? Here, Minsvenks uh, didn't find the right way. Uh huh. Yeah. So this was a tough, tough move. This move is difficult also, but if you look carefully, you can see that. The pawn on d4 is still weak. So you can you should play here queen b6. If you look at it uh, from this perspective, it's a double attack, right? You're attacking a6, and at the same time, you're attacking d4. So it's a very nice uh, tactical move, and uh, white is not helped at all by swapping queens. Sometimes when we're in trouble, we like to swap queens, but this is not one of those cases because, uh, yeah, white is, is busted here no matter what they play. In the game, they took, and as you can see here now, we are happy to attack the rook at the same time. Knight xd4 is coming up, the rook on c3 is loose. Not a chance that white can save themselves here. Bishop takes before knight xd4. This is over because too many pieces are hanging in the game. They played instead bishop b7, and after knight xd4, black went on to win. Aha, knight c1. Yeah, this is how, how the game went, went I think. And uh, here, I think our friend Amazin said e6, but in the game, they played knight e6, which was probably stronger. Yeah, because you're winning, winning the exchange, right? It's a double attack here. If, uh, discovered attack, sorry. Uh, so that's that's basically the idea. Uh, but yeah, e6 is probably winning also. Yeah, after all, you're two pawns up and you have a better position. So what happened in this example? Black was a pawn up, uh, but white had some positional compensation. However, by means of this very, very surprising move b5, black was able to... Uh, to counterattack white. And I would say like a general rule, if you play, I mean, this is very basic, but if you if you have a pawn center like this and a pawn on f3, uh, it makes sense to have the bishop on e3. I know there are a million exceptions from that, but uh, yeah, this is an example. If you had the bishop in the right place from the, from the very beginning, uh, this wouldn't uh, happen, right? So yeah, that's the way I would look at this. All right, let's see if we can uh, check another example. Uh, what? A, okay, th this one is very nice. Yeah, let's let's have a look at another end game. Okay, let's have a look at another end game. This one is very nice. Uh, why did White play f3? Yeah, I guess that happened in the beginning of the game. I guess this was the bishop c4 variation, right? Bishop c4 and the knight e2. That's how you got that. Okay, let's have a look at another end game. But it's not a typical end game. As you can see, it's a very wild end game. Black is whole rook down, however, white's king is rather exposed. So I would like you to think about how should white continue in this very, very complex uh, position. Uh, let's quiz you on this one. You're playing with the white pieces. Of course, we would like to win this game. After all, we're a whole uh, rook up. However, black has some counter chances here. So yeah, your uh, move here, okay, I'll just quiz you for until this point. One minute 30, yeah, good luck everyone. Why to play and try to make the best of it? Take your time, please, take your time, okay? Take your time, there are some pitfalls uh, on the way here, okay? Yeah, I get the point, uh, Royal RRG Chess Master Hacker Guru. That's what the Iranian Grandmaster played, uh, but that was not a good idea. Black gets away with the draw there. Heavy the hero, Kugel Chess, bad news for you. Subham, bad news. Black will make a draw here by some surprise. Yeah, by some tactical surprises. Again, we're speaking surprises here. Uh, everybody wants to play like that. We don't have any winners. Okay, HDI chess, you got it. Yeah, that's fine. You can give that check first if you like. So we have a winner here. HDI chess is the winner. Uh, that's too beautiful, uh, Titan chess, I think. that's Your move is too, too beautiful. I can play queen f7 check, I guess. Uh, so chess samurai also got it, as well as HDI chess and Amazon. Amazon is having a great... Uh, a session today, right? He's getting everything right, it seems. Uh huh. Very nice. Okay, so Wuches, you also got it. Wuches got the right solution. So let's uh, listen to Wuches. Okay, Wuches, how would you continue here with White? So I would play Queen D5. This 
Um, if king f5, there's rook h5, king takes g4, queen g2, king takes h5, queen h3, king g5, queen g3. With a exactly, that's how the game went. That's how the game went. And white, of course, they cannot go to f5 due to mate, so they had to agree to, to draw. That's what white didn't manage to see. Maybe they were in time trouble, I think. They were already past the move 16, so on. Okay, so what was your conclusion, uh, Wuchens? Um, so I was calculating queen d5 for this reason. But then you saw rook e3 and you said, oh, I saw oh, rook this... e3. So at first I calculated king takes e3, but I couldn't, I couldn't see a queer win here. So, um... Aha, it's not so clear, right? Uh, black's queen is very active also and yeah. you don't have so many checks. Uh, so but then you notice something. Just from process of elimination, I came to the conclusion of king f5 and I realized there was an easy win after queen takes d5. Rook 1a7. Exactly. King f5, what a surprising move. After queen takes d5, we have rook a7 and white wins. Yeah, okay, I could have stopped here. I, I asked you for uh, the next moves here. Yeah, uh, as you can see here, everybody, uh, we cannot escape with the king. Then black is mated. So in the game, they had to play. I mean, in the vari variation, had to play here. So somebody was saying, why rook a7? It's okay, it's okay, rook a7. I can only give you one uh, correct move. I cannot put multiple choices here. So king takes e4 or rook a7, both of these are fine, of course. White will win effortlessly thanks to their big material advantage. Uh, so, yeah. Which rook did you use? You can only use one rook, right? You cannot use the other rook. Or, or you mean like a cruel uh, joke with black to, to, <laughs> to give check with that rook? Yeah, probably you can do that also. I didn't think of that, honestly. But... Uh, Probably you can play like that, you mean, to, to go back with the rook. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a funny joke. You can play on black if you like. But uh, else, it's easier to play uh, like uh, Wuch has explained here. So after queen d5, looks like a big mistake. However, we have this very, very surprising move, king f5. Not easy at all, but okay. It has to do with black's king safety, right? And here, black is forced to give back the material and end in a losing endgame because... Uh, yeah, they they can't go to h6 due to the mate. So, yeah, I think it's like uh, Wuchas was saying, something about elimination technique also. Once I noticed that this is uh, king takes, it's not convincing, I should have at least have a quick look at other moves. Okay, we can quickly see that king e4 is not a good idea, but uh, yeah, maybe spend a second or two on moves like king f5 also. So maybe we should bring up our last uh, example for today. And uh, I thought about this very nice game played by uh, the top uh, Swedish player, Nils Gandelius. He was playing with uh, white pieces in a Sicilian Nydorf. Let's see if uh, we can understand this together. Very strong player. Um, here we have Sicilian Nydorf with bishop g5. Black play knight bd7. I'm not an expert here really, but I know that the most critical is supposed to be the poison pawn variation, right? But okay, here they play knight 7 and white play now bishop c4, some kind of sozin uh, transposition here. Uh, e6, castles, queen a5, f4, white's development is very fast in this game. Queen c5, already now you can see there are some tactics coming up. We're not even at move uh, 10, but uh, already there are issues here the white king is, is exposed. By the way, in the previous example, it was like beyond move 60, but it was saying move 5, because I'm always using the initial moves here, uh, like 1, 2, 3, and so on.